The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good evening, Marshall Reddick investors. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend time with us. We really appreciate it. Before we get started, I would like to take a moment to do a quick sound check to make sure everyone can hear us. Um, so if you can hear me, please let me know by typing in the city and state that you're joining us from, and we will see if everyone can hear us. Okay, Sue, San Diego, welcome, thank you. Westminster, thank you so much. Hacienda Heights, San Diego. So yes, it looks like everyone can hear us, so that's great. My name is Michelle Suter. I am a real estate advisor here at Marshall Reddick, and I'm very excited about the presentation that we have for you this evening on the Florida market with our wonderful reps from my realty story. As an investor myself, I look at several different factors when deciding to invest in a particular market. Some of the things that I personally look for myself or my investment port portfolio, I look very closely at the job growth in the area, the appreciation rate, population growth, cash flow, and most importantly, making sure that the right team is in place and we have an excellent comp um, combination of those factors in the Florida market. We have a strong team for you with Terry and Ken Duffy. We have a long history with them as we have worked with them for well over 10 years now. We have a lot of investors like yourself that have purchased in the market and are happy with their investments and the superior customer service experience received when working with um, Terry and Ken. They are just totally awesome. Um, during this evening's presentation, you will hear a lot of great information about the amazing investment opportunity, opportunities available in the Florida market, as well as how my Realty Story team provides an excellent customer service experience for all of our investors. Ken and Carrie have also sorted through all available properties in Southwest Florida, and they're brought to you this evening four single family homes, um, two rented duplexes, and fully rented fourplex. So these are the best of the best that's available currently in the market. Please keep in mind that this is an interactive webinar, so feel free to submit questions via the question box throughout the presentation. We will answer um, any questions that you may have. We will also answer questions at the end of tonight's presentation. So at this time, I will turn it over to Ken and Terry. Let them give you the wonderful details about the Florida market and the amazing opportunities available. So you can take it away, Ken. All right, Michelle, well, thank you for that nice introduction. And uh, I am Ken, and this is my lovely assistant, Barbie. No, Hello to everybody. It's Terry. <laughs> Terry's my wife. Um, thanks, you guys, for joining us, taking the time out um, from your busy schedules, evenings, rush hour, dinner, family time, uh, to uh, allow us to uh, invite you into the Florida market. Um, it's a great market um, for some of you that have probably uh, come up to some of our uh, seminars in the uh, in the. Uh, California area. We were out a couple months ago, um, hitting three different locations with uh, Scott and the uh, the group. So if you had a chance to come and see us, um, thank you for doing that. Uh, what we're going to do tonight is we're going to we're going to go over the Florida market um, down here in South Florida and show you what we got. We got some great great properties um, at the end of the presentation and just a lot of information. If you've never um, been to Florida, never visited Florida, um, or for the first time are investing in Florida. Um, I'm sure you're going to be um, pleasantly uh, surprised at the market down here. It's, it's doing very well. Um, we've got great, great, great opportunities coming in uh, consistently on the market uh, with regards to foreclosures coming on the market, coming through the banking system. So um, we've got some great properties that need some work, some that are turnkey, and then obviously um, just new builds are starting to come back into the market now. We just have a huge influx of people moving uh, snowbirds coming down from the south.
I mean, I'm sorry, from the north, uh, the Midwest, Michigan area, um, as well as the Northeast. So we'll, uh, we'll move right into the next slide. And um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to just type them in. Uh, Michelle said she was going to take some. There's some real good, important questions. She said she was going to throw the brakes on, and uh, we'll answer those questions. And uh, we'll, get, we'll get moving down here. So our information is here. Uh, obviously, we've been with Marshall Reddick for a long time. We represent the Fort Myers, Lehigh, and the Cape Coral area, which is considered southwest Florida. We are south of Tampa. Um, and we'll have a slide here in a minute that'll show you our location. So our home office information, that number is the number to get a hold of us. Uh, Terry is the brains of the operation. So if you need to have any questions, contact information, this is, this is the slide you want to write it down. Um, that's her email address, and she is available at any time. Give her a shout. My Realty Story is the broker uh, where we have our licenses. So that's enough on us. Here's a, a little outline of tonight. Um, meet our team. That's us and all the Marshall Reddick people on the other end of the line. We're going to talk uh, Fort Myers, Lehigh, Cape Coral, uh, Florida. They're all three separate cities within a geographical area. They all attach or they, they border each other. So we'll talk about the Southwest Florida economics. Um, our quality of life down here is, is phenomenal. We're on the wide, on the quiet coast, we call it. We're directly across from Miami. So um, there's an old joke around here. The, they say the sidewalks roll up at 9 o'clock, which is great. It's a great place to raise a family. It's not crazy 24-7. Uh, so our market conditions, we'll also go over that. A lot of information in the slides. Um, you guys will have availability to this uh, PowerPoint um, through uh, the tab on the Marshall Reddick website. Um, so this, this PowerPoint is always available to you if you want to breeze over it, look it over again. Um, questions kind of always pop up when, when uh, the presentation comes to an end and we've, uh, we've kind of parted ways. So. And then we'll touch base on our cash flow and appreciating properties that we have available now at the end of the website, uh, at the end of the webinar. Um, we'll have some slides going over the property. That's where Terry will come in and, and talk specifically about cash flow and, and uh, appreciation rates on these great properties. So here's a picture of us. Um, I can tell you this, I do have a lot more gray hair than that's in that <laughs> photo right now. It's probably because we got a 12-year-old daughter that uh, we're, uh, we're having fun raising. So our focus um, as real estate agents, um, like Michelle had said, we've been with Marshall Reddick since uh, 2000, 2004. Um, we've been uh, representing them in the Southwest Florida market for a while. Our focus really truly is about um, you, the buyer, the investor. Um, you guys are, are buying property in an area that maybe you've never come to, uh, to visit or haven't seen. We have, uh, Terry's, Terry's dealt with, and we've dealt with hundreds of people that have bought property sight unseen. And uh, our job is to answer every question, cross every T, dot every I for you so that you have the answers you need, you have the information you need to make it an informed decision. So all of the information in this in this PowerPoint is all factually based. We don't make this stuff up. It's it's current information that we pull from our local information sources down here, you know, realtors, uh, associations and and the such. So uh, we lived in Florida since 2001 and uh, once again that's our contact information. So let's talk a little about Lehigh Acres. Um, Lehigh Acres is a diverse community. Um, it's east of Fort Myers. It's about 97,000 residents, and it encompasses about 90 square miles. So it's a growing community. Um, its its numbers and population have gone up every single year, and uh, that 97,000 is probably right at 100,000 now. So once those communities hit that 100,000 uh, population mark, you start seeing a lot of other communities a lot of communities they start to really grow with um, with huge you know developments housing developments um, the Walmarts are coming in they're building a new Walmart um, not too far from it uh, Lehigh Acres is 12 miles east of Fort Myers and Lehigh Acres uh, I'm sorry it's it's east of Fort Myers Lehigh Acres um, is, a, is a, like I said it's a bedroom community it's got tons of ponds and lakes and canals um, so there's there's plenty plenty to do. Uh, it's, it's a great place for retirees to come down because they have a fixed income, so they go to an area where it's very affordable, and that's that's where we're finding a lot of good deals um, in Lehigh and and Cape Coral as well. Tons of parks, lakes, tennis, safe roads. You can you can go on the internet and, and just you know throw in uh, the Lehigh Acres into the search field there, and, and you'll just there'll be so much information about it. So. It's an enclave. Um, it's a retreat for families, seniors seeking affordable and a laid-back 
vacation kind of town. It's it's very diverse, so it's uh, it's a real great community. One of three communities in the uh, Southwest Florida market to uh, to go search for properties in, and that's uh, that's what we'll do for you. So here's a map of the peninsula. Obviously, you can see Cape Coral, where the red dot is, Bonita Springs, Naples. That's the west coast of Florida. And then you've got on the east coast, Lauderdale, Miami. So that's kind of Florida in an overview. We're south of Tampa, about, I'd say about two hours. And we are about an hour and a half directly west of Miami. So in that road, I-75, that goes across the bottom of the peninsula there, that's what they call Alligator Alley. And it's, uh, it's a four-lane highway, and it cuts right through the center of the Everglades. So it's, uh, it's an interesting ride over. It's, it's very, I wouldn't say desolate, but it's just it's beautiful. It's a, it's a, it's a watershed for the, the entire state of Florida. <clears throat> this is Lehigh Acres, a little snapshot of it. The purple line indicates the outline of the actual uh, city or the, the, uh, the, the town of Lehigh. And it's, it's, like I said, it's roughly between 90 and 115 square miles. As you can see off to the west or the left, that's Fort Myers. The coloring is not really too good in this picture, but you can see a river that runs along Fort Myers and Cape Coral um, down in the, in the left-hand corner of that picture. That's where the Gulf of Mexico is down by Fort Myers Beach. Um, we went over the population already, 97,000. The average household income is between 37 and 52,000. We've got a lot of new young families moving down. They're coming down to the area for jobs, um, jobs, jobs. Our area is exploding with some big, big corporations moving in. And, uh, you know, just normal growth that we always see in Florida. So by population out in Lehigh, um, the sales makes up 29% of the, uh, the income of the families that generate income out there, construction 17, and manufacturing 11. So that kind of gives you an overview of what these uh, families make out, uh, the population, the people that live in Lehigh. Lehigh Acres is tucked away from the bustle of Fort Myers. Fort Myers is the largest city. It's a city of about, I'd say, between five and 600,000. Um, it's kind of where everybody goes to work. It's, uh, it's a growing city. It's a very prosperous city. It's, they've got um, high rises that are starting to break around in the next year. There's a, a big Miami developer coming over, and, and he's putting four towers up. Um, and they're due to break ground in 2016 and, and probably build out around 2020. Um, so Fort Myers is really, really coming around again. Um, it's a peaceful and affordable community. Um, it's located 25 miles east of Fort Myers, or no, it's located about 25 minutes east of Fort Myers. This is Lehigh Acres. Um, so Fort Myers, Sanibel, um, Captiva Island, these are communities that are very close uh, to the Lehigh area. Um, and Lehigh is very close to Southwest uh, International Airport. And the beach is very close. Uh, probably on a, on, a, on a normal day, you can drive from Lehigh and be to the, the white sandy beaches of, um, of uh, Fort Myers Beach probably in about 35 minutes. So that's kind of what draws a lot of people to the area. It's, it's huge um, with regards to vacationers and uh, snowbirds. Here's some of the pictures that we put on, uh, on the slides. Um, Fort Myers Beach. The sand is actually that white. If you've ever been to South Florida, it's, it's sugar sand. It's, it's real beautiful. Um, Edison Ford Summer Home is here. There's a lot of things to do um, when you come down here. That's why it's a big draw for families vacationing down to the southwest uh, area of Florida. you got the lighthouse, just Pine Island Marina. It's just kind of a little overview of what it looks like down in the area, and it's, uh, it's really beautiful down here. The beaches are rated top 10. They're always in the top 10. Um, in the world, so Sanibel is usually lays, top five. yeah, usually in the top five. Sanibel is always up there, and the beaches are just fabulous. It's a big shelling, um, uh, I would say, community. Yeah, in 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 Sanibel, you can walk the beaches, and the way the currents run along that that shoreline along Sanibel Island, it just washes off just some incredible shells. And people are always on the beach, just you know, bending over, picking up shells. So it's uh, it's a big family thing to do. Here's just a couple of pictures. My daughter's in the upper left. She's a beach bum. She loves it. She likes sticking her toes. That was she was quite a few years ago. She's, <laughs> well, she's, she's, she's the next one in the, yeah. in the kayak too. <laughs> she's the one in the, in the lower right there, all growing up. But um, just some of the pictures, you know, of uh, of our area that I threw in there from from our travels. Um, Cape Coral's a waterfront community. That lower left photo there. Um, Cape Coral's got 119 miles of canals that run throughout that city. 
and it is a boater's paradise there. And we're seeing some great deals. We got investors right now that are coming in and scooping up properties on on the waterfront. Um, the houses back up to canals. You could put your boat on a on a boat dock. Um, go out your back door, jump on your boat, and be out in the Gulf of Mexico in a half hour. Or um, Cape Coral is getting real big into um, making restaurants available along these canals so people could take their boats to dinner. Um, and then the kayaking along, the rivers are just endless down here. There's so many different areas where you could just, you know, take a kayak, go rent a kayak, and just dump, you know, jump in the river and, and just go, go for a ride. So that's kind of the lifestyle where we're at. It's, it's a great place. We love it. So these are some of the home sites that we've, uh, well, we've sold and uh, just the, we've taken pictures of and put them on the website to kind of give you guys an idea what the home sites look like down here. You've got some of them that are, you know, wooded home sites that have a lot of pine trees on them. And then, you know, you'll have single family homes in the upper right that are just cleared and uh, real clean and, and neat properties. Lower left is a typical residential duplex in Lehigh Acres. And then uh, typical elementary schools, I, in the last five years, they've built four schools out in Lehigh Acres uh, for the population growth that has come into Lee County. Um, the population growth still continues to grow. They can't build the schools fast enough, so there was a, a big shopping, uh, shopping centers that were going out of business. Publix is like the real big shopping conglomerate here, but Albertsons moved out, and Albertsons was another big food chain. Well, Lee County School District said, you know what, we're going to take over those big shopping centers that have the Albertsons food stores in them, and the food stores range, you know, between... 60 and 120,000 square feet. So in order to keep up with the growth for the kids, they, they took over like five or six of the Albertsons and turned them into schools, which is a smart move, but they needed the square footage. They had to get, you know, they had to get these schools up. So they're in the process of building a couple of new high schools in Fort Myers and, uh, and one in Bonita Springs, but it's a, just a typical shot of some of the stuff that's, that's going on in Lehigh in the Fort Myers area. So South Florida home construction, we get a lot of questions on, you know, everybody always talks about hurricanes. The houses, the typical home construction consists of a port slab, uh, concrete block walls with a wood frame roof system. Uh, the roof systems are tied in. They're, they're literally fastened to the walls, um, you know, with these hurricane straps. Uh, all the homes are uh, wind and impact rated for up to 120 mile an hour winds. It's, it's the Florida code. It's the building code. It's, it's some of the strongest in the nation. Um, as well as up along the Mississippi coast. Uh, the houses now are, are, are rated up to 150 mile an hour wind. So when you get these houses, they're just not, they're, they're not any wood frame homes. These, these houses are built very, very solid. Um, hurricane insurance uh, is mandated by the state and is included in all homeowners policies. So some people say, well, you know, is hurricane insurance real expensive? And we say, no, it's not. It's just that they, part of the FEMA has made it part of your homeowners insurance policy. And Terry can answer those questions specifically uh, with regards to how much, uh, you know, a typical house would cost for, for, for insurance and <clears throat> on a typical home down here. The red house you see on the ro uh, lower right is one that we drove by not too long ago. And uh, so some of the houses out there in, in, in Lehigh Acres and Cape Coral and surrounding areas, you got a lot of baby boomers coming down and they're, they're calling this their last, their last hurrah, you know, that's their retirement home. So we see a lot of high-end homes being built around the area, which is good because it draws values up um, for the investor who may be buying a house down the street or across the street. So, Hi, Ken. Very active. Yes. We have a um, good question from Shannon. She wanted to know, how difficult is it to get homeowner's insurance in that area? It's not difficult at all. I, every property that is that we put on the website, I send to the insurance company prior to posting it, and I get an insurance quote from them. So you'll know those costs prior to, to even, in, you know, if, if someone were to be interested in one of the houses we had at the end of the PowerPoint, we would already have those numbers, you know, typically, but it's not very difficult at all. You know, there's no, there's no issues uh -huh. with getting, you know, homeowner's insurance. It's not anything that's difficult, um, um, probably no different than anywhere else in, 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 you know, in the country. Great. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> so with, with regards to the lifestyle, um, what kind of drives our economy is 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 the, the the warm Gulf of Mexico. I mean, we literally we owe everything to the Gulf of Mexico and the Southwest area because it just that's what drives our economy: tourism and 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 just construction and building and and everything that you know just dominoes off of that. 
it's a boating, kayaking, fishing, snorkeling, sunbathing, and biking community. I mean, everything is just, it's, it's 24 seven down here in the summertime. People push down here, um, because it's summertime and kids are all off on vacation. And then in the wintertime, when it's snowing up there, they still keep coming down here. Our population swells in the uh, Fort Myers area. Um, population typically is around between 600 and probably 700,000 in the winter months like right after Thanksgiving when everybody comes down when it's snowing up north the population grows from about 700 to about 1.4 million so we have a huge I mean you see it on the roads it's just it's massive the restaurants are packed um, and they're all coming down for the beach what you see right there is Fort Myers Beach in the right hand photo and um, it's just we've, we've got over 60 miles of, of white sandy beaches this is just one small beach that you see here in the Fort Myers area it continues to go south all the way into Naples so it's just continuous beach sands and boating which is uh, which is great that's why we love this area you know when people think about going on vacation they don't think about going to like Canton Ohio they just they come to Florida last year just in our area alone you know we had over 40 million visitors just at the Fort Myers area Florida had some astronomical number I can't remember but um, the states just seeing massive amounts of people moving here on a daily basis so it's it's good it's it's creating jobs and that's what keeps the economy moving some of the malls that they've built in this area um, typically in the last I'd say what five or six years they've they've built these malls Coconut Point Mall it was the one fix, you know picture you see right in the center there that's the oldest probably eight years old yeah that that mall was nothing it was built on 220 acres of just grass field with cows now it's got anchor stores it's got you know 30 restaurants it's just all the malls out here are they have a Mediterranean open shopping atmosphere where you just you walk from store to store to store outside shopping a lot of covered seating areas uh, fountain features so they're all just really pleasant to go to when people come down here you know the guys go golfing and the women go shopping and that's you know it's kinda how it runs around here uh, Miramar outlets uh, they just did their third expansion they're probably up to over 500 shops in Miramar outlets that's the upper left picture that one there is near the the, uh, the college and then the Gulf Coast Town Center is another big one they put up not too long ago that's got Bass Pro Shops it's it's got Dick's Sporting Goods you know the, the typicals the PF Chang's the restaurants Carabas you name it it's got it in there um, LA Fitness um, and now the hotels are starting to spring up around these big shopping centers to handle all the seasonal people coming in um, they rent houses you know for months at a time we got a big Euro European uh, population that comes over in the winter time, um, the German population, and then we got a lot of Canadians that come down. So uh, they got to come down and pump money into our economy. So we got to give them a place to shop, and that's what they're doing. So everything's, you know, real, real good in a real good position. Uh, Fort Myers. There's some pictures of downtown Fort Myers. Uh, they, the, the, the picture on the left is just the Fort Myers Bridge, one of the bridges that goes over the Caloosahatchee River. Um, everything is pretty much built around water uh, the water is the main theme um, and people you know they just love it and uh, some of the high rises that went up a couple years ago is high point those are those uh, four buildings or five buildings you'll see on the uh, on the upper left and then downtown Fort Myers they um, designated it a, a historical district so they spent five years and they ripped up all the roads and they took all these old historical buildings and they turned them into shops and bistros and shopping so it's really a great location to go down to now where it, it, it wasn't so much you know probably eight nine years ago but now it's it's uh, yeah it's got a nightlife now it's really thriving um, so that's a, that was a real big draw for downtown so uh, I believe it was the Sheridan that they just Sheridan sure, Hotel yeah. just announced they're gonna put a huge hotel up downtown uh, right next to the Harborside Convention Center and uh, I, I believe it's you know it's, it's probably I think about a 30 or 40 million dollar building uh, hotel that they're gonna put up so the downtown starting to crank and like I said there's a Miami developer now that's uh, he bought some land when the market was in a downturn and he bought the land very cheap and now he's going to put up uh, I think it was four or five 30 story uh, 30 story condominiums down there so that's due to break ground uh, next I believe next year in 16 2016 so Florida's real big for most of you that know uh, spring training is huge these are just some of the teams that um, come down to the southwest Florida area to uh, to come down and spring train Boston Red Sox is very local they just built a brand new stadium about 10 minutes from Lehigh Acres uh, this is the actual stadium it's called uh, uh, JetBlue Stadium um, 
it was a huge campus they built. Um, we've got the Minnesota Twins just north of us in Port Charlotte. Uh, Tampa Bay Rays, they down here, and the Yankees are not too far. They're on the East Coast. Um, and then you got the Miami, I think the Marlins. Uh, but this this big facility they built was on a chunk of land right near the airport, and this is the JetBlue ballpark. It was built in 2012 at a cost of 77.9 million, and uh, it's got 10,000 seats. As you can see from this photo, they've got some some practice fields in the upper left. This facility is never never not used. It's used 365 days a year. They're either having ball games here during spring training, which is massive. They have circuses. They have big RV shows. I mean, you name it, they got it. State fairs. Um, this is just a typical shot from the overhead when they would be, you know, in season during spring training. So they got batting cages. So this was a really huge draw uh, to the area. And to the top of the page above those four baseball fields, the airport is right, right just to the north of it. And then, you know, over to the upper right-hand corner, just literally about probably seven or eight miles away is the, the city limits to Lehigh Acres. So, and now they're starting to put hotels up around this area because of all the people that come down for spring training. It's, it's fanatical um, how many people come down. They sleep on the sidewalks to get spring training tickets. So it's, uh, it's, it's been a real good draw for the area. And like I said, jobs, it creates jobs. You know, this facility has to have a massive amount of people to keep it, you know, in shape and ready for, you know, everything that goes on on a year-round basis. Our airport just went through a huge expansion. Um, it's one of the busiest uh, airports in the nation. It's, uh, it's, it's rated in the top 50. Um, <clears throat> Fort Myers Airport, they built it um, not too long ago, in 2005. It's, they actually had the old airport, which was, was called uh, Fort Myers, um, I think it was Fort Myers, then they changed it to Southwest Regional, but they built a whole brand new airport. And the new airport you see on the right-hand side there, that's the facility that cost $438 million. They built it separate on the on the grounds, and then when this one was complete, they they basically tore the old one down. Um, they're in the process now of doing another expansion onto this air, airport, um, which is it's needed because there's there's not enough terminal gates to handle all the flights coming in. So um, it's located off Interstate 75, um, and it consistently ranks among the 50th busiest airports in the uh, the U.S. for passenger traffic. Um, and it's it's one of the newer uh, terminals in the nation. Like I said, it wasn't built too long ago. Well, 2005. It's it's 10 years old. But they're doing another expansion. Um, they got a 50 million dollar grant from the FAA to build a control tower. And with that control tower, once it goes in, they're going to put a fifth runway in. And once they put the fifth runway in, then they're going to start construction on the D concourse, and they're going to add like another 70 gates. So um, the interchange photo that you see there on the upper left that was built and finished just about two months ago. So it was a couple of years worth of, I guess, construction. Um, the airport didn't have any interchange access from Interstate I-75. So now that that's in, all that land that you see going out, if you look in the upper left-hand part of the photo there, you can see the one runway. Um, all along what they call airport access road now, you're going to start seeing hotels. They're already starting to sell the land and clear the land to start putting hotels up. Um, so that uh, you know, pilots and everybody flying into the area has places to uh, to stay. So let's talk about the Southwest Florida Economic Engine. These are very current uh, current stats. Um, one of the big ones that that kind of caught a lot of people's attention, and we have seems like we got a little bit of overlap on the on the uh, on the text. So I apologize for that, but. Last year, Florida passed New York uh, to become the nation's third most populous state. Um, and it, it literally passed uh, New York. Um, we have so many people moving down here. Last year, 293,000 residents moved to the state of Florida, permanent residents. Then we're not talking people coming down and making a second home. They permanently moved here from July 1st of 2013 to July 1st of 2014. So now, Florida's population is 19.9 million, and that number is just staggering um, when you think about it. It's roughly about 8,000 residents, uh, um, I think it was a, a day, coming into the area. Um, not just Southwest Florida, but the whole state of Florida. So California, you guys still hold the, the number one seed, and then it's Texas, I believe, and then it was New York, but now it's Florida. So 
that just tells us, you know, people are moving down here. Like I said, that just creates a, a strong economy. Um, there's some t statistics out there. There, are a lot of people when they move to Florida, they move south of the I-4 corridor, and the I-4 corridor is like, if you look at the map of Florida, you got Tampa on the west coast, you got Orlando in the center of the state, then you got kind of Jacksonville and Daytona on the east coast. Anything south of I-4 is where most of these people are moving, um, and it's I, I believe it's just for location. They when you get south of Tampa, it, it's very subtropical where we live, so it's it's literally green all year round. We don't really have any any season where you you look around and things are not really blooming and green. So it's uh it's it's the location that they're all moving to. Uh, Southwest Florida's unemployment rate is down to five percent. Um, if you read anywhere, it's pretty much five percent is full employment. If you come to South Florida and you're looking for a job, you can find it. Um, Terry and I drive around. You know, whether we're bringing our daughter to gymnastics or going home or just driving around to restaurants, you see trucks everywhere. There's so much construction going on. It's, it's phenomenal. If you, haven't, if you have any plans to come down or want to come down, come on down. You'll see it for yourself. We've had investors fly in, and they're just like, wow, it's, it's really crazy what's going on. Um, the unemployment is literally full employment. So, um, like I said, we've got a lot of corporations and companies that are moving to the area. Hertz is one of them. Uh, tourism plays a huge growth in our economy, and that's 24-7, 365. That never stops. People never stop coming to Florida. It really doesn't matter what time of the year. Um, it's just, you know, sometimes it slows down in the winter months, I mean, in the summer months. Um, but most, for most, most of the part, it's, it's just really, it's, it's real, really strong. Hotels, hospitality, um, they're year-round. Uh, two of the big corporations that come down, or came down. One of them is Hertz. They moved their um, their whole entire headquarters out of Passaic, New Jersey, and they brought down 1,700 jobs. Uh, not everybody wanted to leave Jersey. I don't know why, uh, but they they came down and they were able to um, to bring some of them jobs with them. But they just did a job fair um, a couple of months ago, and I think they hired 200, over 200 people. They're looking to 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 staff the headquarters with 1,700 employees. I think by 2017. Um, right now they're looking to just fill up to about 700 jobs. So they've been doing job fairs uh, consistently on a, on a monthly basis. So um, they just broke ground on a new Walmart, which is really not broke ground. It's almost done uh, just up the street. So that's just some of the huge economic engines that help, you know, keep our economy healthy. You got healthcare technologies. Um, Lee County Memorial uh, Health Systems employs about 10,000 people in that uh, healthcare industry, whether it's children's oncology, they just built a brand new children's hospital up there in Health Park in uh, Fort Myers. So you got nursing is huge, um, and these are all good high paying positions. So new construction homes, shopping centers, all these things that are being built are support, they're all support for the population. People have to shop somewhere, you know, they don't want to drive too far. So as the population grows and the, and the rooftops go in, <coughs> excuse me, they just, uh, they have to build the support for it. So they're popping up all over the place due to growth. Here's a picture of Hertz. Um, this is a photo that I took. Um, I got another photo on the next slide that actually shows the construction. They're, they're I think they're about um, six, about six months, less than six months away from opening. Uh, they chose Lee County for their new global headquarters. They broke ground in 2014. They said it was going to be about a year and a half build out. The campus that they're building on is 75 square acres, which is large, a uh, large chunk of land here in Fort Myers, uh, 250,000 square foot building. And uh, like I said, they're bringing 700 new employees to the local area. I think they're still looking to fill about 400 positions. So that's coming along real strong. Here's a better photo of it. This is this is an older photo. I'd say about three or four months ago. The whole building is now closed in with glass. Uh, parking lots are in, and they're uh, they're really starting to do. They just built a four-story parking structure to the south of it. So everything's really coming along uh, with with regards to Hertz. So and I hear it's a great company to work for. Some of the people in my neighborhood got jobs with them. Um, so they're real happy with that. Here's a picture of the Walmart uh, just up the street. So we all know when Walmart comes to town, we're happy about it. Brand new Walmart not too far from where we live, which is good. Good for jobs, good for everything. So you know when the big dogs come in and they start laying their stake and putting down roots that uh, the economy is going to support that 
their investment. So that's uh, that's always a good indicator when investing. The colleges down here are are just they're they're sprouting, they're growing, they're getting bigger, they're adding campuses. Florida Gulf Coast University is one of the biggest. All these colleges, all the information, you know, we've got the we've got the uh, the advantage of the internet now. You guys can pull up all these colleges and just look at the demographics of them. But some of the big hitters are Florida Gulf Coast University, <coughs> excuse me, Hodges and uh, Florida Southwestern, which used to be Edison. They're they're trying to they're trying to compete with Florida Gulf Coast University now. Um, Florida Gulf Coast University about four years ago was about 4,000 students. Now they're up to 12,000. They've got an accelerated nursing program. A lot of the kids that go to college, um, maybe some some of the kids that rent your houses if you decide to invest down here. We we look at properties all the time, Terry and I, and we go in and we look at them and there's, there are college kids renting them um, because there's, they can't build housing fast enough on these campuses for all the college kids. Uh, Florida Southwestern is, is really just uh, – exploding with growth as well they just uh, created a whole new sports program for their for their uh, college so this year they're going to be building a basketball and a volleyball stadium uh, it's going to open in 2016 so this is built right here they, they found a piece of land right near the campus and uh, the, the college is right right in Fort in Fort Myers right downtown so they're going to build this 24 million 75,000 square foot stadium for volleyball and basketball um, so that was another thing, like I said, construction jobs, people coming in the area, um, they need places to stay, places to rent, places to eat. So everything's popping up where all these big venues are going in. All the land just goes up, all the value on everything, whether it's commercial, residential, it, it just has a cascading effect. So it's, it's really good. Here's a picture of Florida Gulf Coast. Um, they've got full sports program, basketball, hockey, lacrosse. Uh, that's just a shot of the main campus when you drive in. Um, and not too far from this campus is uh, one of those big shopping centers that we had showed, the Gulf Coast University shopping, which was huge. All right, so some of the real estate market. This is current data that we just uploaded not too long ago to our PowerPoint. The median sales price um, is up 18.9% from last year. So last year at this time, the median price of a house in Fort Myers, Cape Coral area was 185 last year. Now it's 219 and changed 938. It's, it's growing. It's uh, it may be even higher than that. Uh, 5.2 months supply compared to 6.3 months of supply last year. So as the supply goes down, um, the demand goes up, and what that causes is a rise of value, which means your investment goes up. So if you are in the game. Good. If you're not in the game, get in the game because if you want to get on this ride, it's it's going and it's going in a good direction. It's steady, steady growth. You know, it's it's nothing crazy like the the, you know, the heyday and when real estate was going nuts. This is just really good, steady growth based. You know, growth built on on good good economic you know engines, which is you know the economy that's really pushing the foreclosure. Nothing's overinflated. Uh, foreclosures only represent 13% of the sales. Um, which is low, that 13%, you know, that's, that's, those are houses that are coming on the market. Some of the houses are in really, really, really super bad shape. Um, you know, Terry and I have looked them, walked them, done some of them. Um, we've, we've actually taken some of them and, and, you know, some of the investors put money into them and, uh, and they wind up with a, good, with a good deal. So if it's something that you're looking for, we can certainly help you guys out trying to find some of those houses that need some renovation. And, uh, you know, if you go in way, way below a replacement value, then you're you're buying with equity, so they're they're out there. We just gotta we gotta dig them up. So, the average single family listing um, takes 44 days to sell. I believe that number's a little high right now. It's 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 probably about 35 to 37 days, um, based on what we see in, in our area um, <clears throat> to sell the, to for a house to be on the market, and that's a decrease of 8.3 percent compared to last year. So. The numbers are going in a great direction. So these numbers um, that we report here, they're all through. Uh, if you guys want to go onto Florida Realtors, um, you know dot dot com, or you know go into the uh, Greater Fort Myers um, and the Beach Board of Realtors, they have a a website there where you can pull information. So sales prices have appreciated 72.2 percent over the last five years, and that's specifically to Lehigh because there's been such great deals and great sales out there. So uh, prices are really doing doing well out there, and appreciation is doing phenomenal. So it's a great market to get into. Oops, let me hit the 
wrong one. Oh, there we go. Sorry, folks. Uh, median sales price. This is kind of a chart uh, that shows you the appreciation rates for the first quarter of 2015. It's 12.4%. Uh, um, what these lines represent, um, if you just really pay attention to the orange one, the orange one represents three bedroom homes. And what we're seeing with a lot of the sales is investors and, and just regular buyers alike are wanting four bedroom homes. Uh, they just, they need them, you know, for extra space, storage, or, you know, kids, young families are moving into the area, so they need that, they need that space, and that's a good thing um, for our area. Our, uh, our age, median age is going down which is good. So that's what this chart represents. Uh, Cape Coral, Fort Myers, the uh, market statistic analysis shows the appreciation trending uh, in an upward direction. The blue line with the dots there represents the median sales price. So if you look over to the far right of the chart there, 2013 and 2014, we saw an uptick in appreciation average of about 6.1%. So that's good. That's, uh, this is data that's pulled directly from the market. And we turned it into a fancy little chart for, for you guys to look at. So the rental market's really strong down here. Um, the reason being is we have so many people moving back into the area looking for, for employment. And they're getting employment. So when they come back into the area, they, uh, they need a rental market. Plus, we had a huge, huge crash, like we all know, in the market. Florida was hit real bad, along with Vegas and some of the other areas. Uh, some of the people can't afford to rent right now. So I mean, can't afford to buy a home right now. They're still in the process of rebuilding their credit. So rental is very strong. Terry will talk a little bit about Cassette, um, the girl who does our property management aspect, and she's got a waiting list um, of people uh, that she's trying to place in homes. So the market's really good. Uh, Fort Myers rental market ranks fifth uh, in the U.S., along with five other Florida cities. Uh, why Florida? Well, everyone's moving to Florida. Some people come down here, they just uh, they move into the area and they want to rent for six months to see where they want to be and kind of get to know the lay of the land. Um, Lee County rental rates will see a steady increase of 3% a year through 2017. And that's uh, from Axiometrics.com. It's a company that <coughs> excuse me, tracks uh, rental statistics and data. So the fourth quarter analysis of best markets to invest in rental property uh, places Daytona Beach, Fort Myers, Orlando, Fort Lauderdale, and Tampa in the top 10 markets to invest in. Globestreet.com is a really good uh, website to go to uh, to look for information in the Florida market. So that's another website you guys can jot down or just revisit our PowerPoint if you forget any of these uh, .coms to go to. Uh, Southwest Florida Properties, recently Yahoo Real Estate, uh, which is one of the top real estate websites, put Fort Myers Cape Coral Market as the number one area with the highest rising home prices. Uh, I think a lot of that is attributed to the 239,000 people that moved to Florida. I would, I would imagine it's got something to do with that. So Globe Street ranked Fort Myers area number five as best markets to invest in rental property. So those are just statistics that are kind of pumping our area in a good direction. Lehigh Acres, Cape Coral have seen an increase of 18.9%. We already went over that slide in the median sales price, single family homes year over year to 218. I think that number is really more like around 222. So National Association of Realtors is a great website to go to or news-press.com. That's our local newspaper. You could go to that website. You can click on the business section, which will take you to the real estate section. And it just has very, very fingers on the pulse of what's going on in Southwest Florida and the Fort Myers market. It's got a great real estate section. It's, it's huge down here because uh, there's a lot, lot to read about. So it's a great, great uh, place to go for, for information. We'll talk about rental market, uh, Lehigh Acres and the Fort Myers area. Uh, the surrounding have, uh, have seen large numbers of investors purchasing homes at low prices for positive cash flow. <clears throat> of course, we all know the more money you put down, the more the property is going to cash flow. But what we have on top of that as well is we've got great appreciation rates. So you're kind of getting a double whammy. Um, so it's, that's, that's what makes this a, a prime place to invest in. Uh, Southwest Florida's economy continues to grow. So does the demand for residential rental market. And that's just 
sheer numbers based on people moving into the area. Lehigh Acres rental property value vacancy rate is currently at four to six percent. So it's very, like I said, very low. Cassette, most of the other rental company agencies that we talk to around the area, they all have uh, a waiting list, yeah, of people just on the list waiting for houses to come available. So um, Terry's had very good success. Uh, if you're an investor and you buy a home, typically they're going to have somebody in that house in less than you know 30 days, two weeks, they'll be in it. So good property management. Um, has never been obviously more important and Terry will talk about that uh, with uh, with Cassette who is our property uh, representative, property manager representative so I'll let her touch base on uh, on Cassette here. This is her. Um, we've been through a few different property managements. Property management companies are so vital to what you're doing because you want somebody who that you can really trust that's going to take care of your property obviously that's what they're making their money on and Cassette is definitely uh, one of the best that I've ever worked with. She's the only person I've ever worked with that actually goes out to the home inspections with the home inspector at the time before you even purchase the property to do her own inspection, take her own pictures, and sometimes it's fun because I'm out there with them and they're in competition. What picture did you get? What picture did you get? And she's, you know, they're like, did you get this? Did you get that? So they kind of keep each other accountable. But um, she's just real good about that, and she's got an online portal where you can go and you can open up your account and see every single thing that's going on with your account any time that you want. She'll be one of the first people that I put you in touch with um, should you decide to invest with us. And uh, if you Skype, she loves to do a Skype because she likes to talk to you face-to-face. -face. Um, she's very accessible. Anybody in her office is, so you'll love her. She's just real thorough about what she does and how she takes care of the properties. She's also the only property manager that I have met that goes out and does, um, you know, six, every six months she does inspections on the property for you. And her first one goes out and she makes a list of everything that's, you know, that is in the property, what she considers, you know, normal wear and tear and what would be tenant damage. And anything that she sees as tenant damage, she repairs and then she obviously, she bills the tenant for it and not you as the owner. So she's real good about keeping up with the stuff just to make sure that, you know, nothing goes haywire along the way where most property managers go out and do an uh, inspection once a year if they decide there's a reason for it. So you don't really know what's going on. So you'll love working with her. This is, um, we have our preferred lender in Florida. This is Randy. And a lot of a lot of investors have tried to use California lenders. It does not work with the state of Florida. The state of Florida's lending rules or laws are completely different than anybody else. So you really have to get approved with somebody that's local here. Um, I've been working with Randy for a couple years now, and he's fabulous. Every time somebody says, "Well, I've tried to do this. I've tried to do this. Nobody could get it done," we take it to Randy, and he gets it done. So he's just, if you're going to, um, he would be obviously the very first person that you would get set up with to get pre-approved for a loan um, if you're going to invest with us and you need a loan. We're going to go over some of the houses that we picked out. The houses that we get, Kenny and I are literally on the MLS every single day looking to see what's new. I've got a couple different uh, people that I work with that actually still go to auction and buy, you know, properties that they they rehab and then they'll bring them to me if they fit um, the credentials that the Marsha Reddick group likes then I take them and I present them to Scott and the, the group in the office and they can go through them also to see if they're you guys you know we think they would work the best for you guys so we do handpick everything that we send to you this is um, this is one that just came on the market not too long ago. I love the name, so I like bamboo. It just sounds kind of you know Florida stuff. But uh, it's a this is in Fort Myers. It's only two oh nine. Beautiful house. It's a two thousand and four, over fifteen hundred square feet, three bedroom, two bath. Um, this is on city water. We have different um, different areas here. A lot of stuff in Lehigh and a lot of stuff in Cape Coral are on well and septic. That's not a bad thing, um, and I grew up on well and septic my whole life, but it's just something else that if you're not familiar with it, sometimes it, it scares people because they've never heard of it before, um, but it's not, it, it's just something different. This house happens to be on city water, so there's never any expenses 
as far as the, the wells having to be repaired or the septic systems having to be repaired. This house will rent for $1,600. I get the, got that from Cassette. And it's going to, it'll cash flow about $119 monthly. And it's got a 22.66% annual ROI. And I don't know how many, you know, the different areas that you look at. A lot of the, a lot of the different um, states have, you know, a lot lower, like in the 8%, 12%. The, the annual ROI, so that's something that Florida has that's really high. This has got a fenced-in backyard, which is a huge plus for people that have, you know, children or if they have little dogs. It's tiled throughout, and it's also got wood laminate in part of this. So this is a gorgeous house. Um, there's a lot of pictures on the website, um, you know, for each of these houses. This is real close to the university, and this is the inside right here. You can see how pretty the floor is. And this back part, so it's, it's a closed-in lanai. Lanais are like back porches only. We have a lot of them that are closed in here, so you have your, you know, it's kind of like a picnic area on the inside. So this is a real pretty house. This one here, this is kind of a unique house. I found this. Um, this reminds me of the quintessential Florida home. It's a little bit older, but it's, uh, it's over 1,600 square feet. It's two be four bedroom, two bath. Kenny uh, mentioned the four bedroom, two bath. The four bedrooms are in high, high demand, and they they fetch more rent because there's so many young families that are moving in there that have children or are going to have children. So the influx into these areas are, you know, first a lot of first time home buyers, and we have retirees because it's cheaper for them to live. But this is I just, I love this house, and this is going to cash flow, you know, like 168 a month has got a high ROI also up to over 23 percent this house will rent for about two thousand dollars or more a month and this is per cassette for the uh, the rental because it's also on a canal and it's also got a boat dock and it's got a pool so and it's I think it's really cute it's, it's decorated in this like nautical theme which I think is adorable it makes me just want to go hang out there This next one, this is a bigger house. This is also a four bedroom, two bath, over 1,700 square feet, 2006, great cash flow, 136. Same thing, high ROI, 23 and a quarter percent. All of our annual um, rate, you know, ROIs are they're, they're, they're fascinating, they're great because all of them are coming in about the same thing. And this one here also is on city water which is nice and there's assessments paid when, when they make a transition in our area where the most of the properties they all started on well and septic and then as the cities grow and the cities kind of move they start like they're starting in the south and moving toward the north putting in city water there's a high assessment the assessments you normally start out can be sixteen to eighteen thousand dollars all these houses that I have found all the assessments are already paid so there's going to be no cost to the new buyer and um, it, it's really a big thing this um, sorry my got a dry throat there and this is uh, it's also got wood laminate throughout and tile throughout four bedroom two bath this will rent for about fifteen hundred real pretty house too it's got a gorgeous do you see the, the lanai on the bottom part that one's screened in, so that's real pretty. You got a great backyard there. This next one, this is a cute little house. This house is under a hundred thousand. And you're, if you look at the price, it's, it's only priced at eighty nine. This is a screaming deal. This it's a, a little bit older too, nineteen ninety one. Um, it's a smaller house. It's led just over eleven hundred square feet, three bedroom, two bath. This is rented. Um, it's been rented at eight fifty. The rent is in as of August is going up to ten fifty, and the tenants already know this, and so they've already ag agreed to stay there. It cash flows one hundred forty thousand, or excuse me, one hundred forty dollars a month. ROI twenty one, almost twenty two percent. It's got a fenced in backyard. Also, we love the fenced in backyards. People love it for kids and for you know for little dogs. It's got a little storage shed back there. Real real cute house. It's very rare that we find houses that are under a hundred thousand dollars right now. I mean, it's just it's very difficult. This house is actually listed on the MLS at ninety nine nine, but uh, we have it. It's a special offer for this webinar at the eighty nine price. So uh, if anybody's looking for a screaming deal, I pulled comps on this the other day, and everything that was similar to this house was over one hundred fifteen thousand.
Next one, this is a duplex. This duplex also is fully rented. Um, a, the duplexes have been really popular over the past year. This is a this is a good size one. This is almost 2,400 square feet, three bedrooms, two baths on each side. It's priced at 165. It's going to cash flow, you know, 270 dollars a month. And this is rented right now at uh, 1,700. Our rents just uh, a little information if there's if you, new people on this listing. A year ago, when we were getting these duplexes, all of the duplexes were rented between 625 to 675 and literally a year later they're all you know seven most of them are 775 up to 900 if you see any that come along that are only rented in the 650 areas it's because they the sellers have put them up for sale and they just haven't wanted to raise the rent because they're, they're gonna sell it and they really don't care um, they you know just it's time for them to move on and they're on to other you know other different prop you know products or whatever they're doing but this is rented it's 850 each side so it's 1700 total <coughs> and I uh, got a you know same thing annual ROI of 19.72 percent this one has it's got new AC systems new pump systems it is on well and septic um, the tenants love it we've met the tenants on uh, at this place they love it they don't want to go any place and so it'd be it'd be like a cash cow um, and the AC is still under warranty also. It's also got a brand new dishwasher. So there's a lot of stuff you can go back on and read all the specifics about each of these pro each of these properties. This one here, this is an older duplex. And I just found this one. It, it's older, but it's been um, refurnished. The whole complete inside has been remodeled. So it kind of reminds me of like watching Property Brothers and or the flip things that all take seem to take place in California it's in 1962 but it had all um, all the electricity and everything was was upgraded and redone and it's got um, it's four bedroom four bath so two bedroom two bath on each size it's fully rented it's rented at sixteen hundred dollars so it doesn't cash flow quite as much um, but it still cash flows at eighty three dollars a month and it's got an ROI at fifteen you know just over fifteen percent 169 it's in Cape Coral it's real it's close to so many things in Cape Coral so that the location is wonderful and so you're paying for the location on this one it's also on city water and has all the assessments paid um, and each side has their own laundry room which most duplexes don't have so just a cute little duplex here's the inside of it it's got a big lanai This is the fourplex. This one here, this is it's big. It, it's you know 3,600 square feet. It's a 1984, eight bedrooms, eight baths. I love this property. It's like getting two two duplexes at one time. It uh, it's going to cash flow just under 300 a month. This is going to go up. Two of these units have been completely rehabbed. Two of them need some work. Um, once the other two, you know, get a little work done on them, and, and you bring and the price comes up because two sides are rented for eight seventy five a piece, and then one's at seven seventy five and one's at seven twenty five. So when you bring those other two up to meet the eight seventy five, it's going to cash flow at four hundred and sixty six dollars a month. That's huge. So at the lower the lower price, the annual ROI is fifteen percent. That's obviously going to go up also. But the two that have been done, it's got new paint, it's got new water heaters, it's got new air conditioning systems. So if somebody's looking for, you know, just uh, this is a, a long-term investment to, to get some really good cash flow coming in, this is definitely the property to jump on. Here's the inside of, of these units. And they're all the same. Each unit is exactly the same. I think they're all just, they're like 900 square feet uh, per side. PowerPoint team. I don't know if this is where this where Michelle comes in and talks about this or I'm not real sure. Oh, I'll be happy to. Well, we have one on one mentee. Okay. I wouldn't sure this is a, this is a new slide for me. <laughs> 
No problem. I'll definitely um, take it from here. And thank you so much, guys, for that wonderful information in regards to the Flutter market. I'm sure our investors are really excited about the offers that are available and the wonderful opportunities. Especially a special offer that you have available to everyone on the 3218 Second Street property. Um, that very good um, price discount, I think. We're going to get some really excited investors about that. So yeah, I, um, I want to. I'm sorry. I said it's like my blue light special. That's your blue light special. So yeah, get it while it's hot. Exactly. So um, I would like to also talk just a little bit about the power team available to our investors. Of course, we have one-on-one -on -one mentoring every step of the way with a Marshall Reddick real estate advisor. Also, cash flow and appreciation, um, single family, multifamily units. Terry Duffy with My Realty Story. She just gave us a great overview and presentation in regards to the market and the available inventory that she looks for. Um, that's really great. And our investors have found really um, good opportunities. And she continues to look for our investors every day to find even more. Uh, also, financing for investors with a proven track record. Um, we do have Randy, as um, Terry did mention, and his amazing funding um, criteria that he can go over with you so you can get financing in place to finance your Florida properties. Also, um, long-term professional property management with... Um, Cassette. She's great, as Terry mentioned, and she'll be more than happy to take the reins in terms of really managing your property and making sure you have the proper tenants in each of your real estate investments. So um, moving forward, uh, we do have a few next steps that we would like to discuss with you. If you can flip it for me, Ken. All right. <laughs> Next steps, um, please email or call uh, myself or your Marshall Reddick real estate advisor. We will connect you with um, our lender or the lender, of course, in Florida so that you can get your pre-approvals and you are ready to connect with Terry so she can find the right property for you and connect with you um, also with our preferred property manager that we spoke of earlier. In addition, um, the next slide, you will see my contact information. My last name's cut off a little bit there, but my name is Michelle Suter, again, a real estate advisor. You have my phone number. Um, I will be here after today's webinar to speak with you a little bit more in terms of what your criteria is and also what you're looking for in terms of your overall real estate strategy and helping you every step of the way. So um, I do want to thank everyone um, for attending the event this evening. Uh, we do have one question that I want to um, ask of Ken and Terry before we wrap things up. And that question came from Denise. She wanted to know um, how long does the average tenant um, lease a property in the Florida market? How long do they stay in that particular property? All of ours are yearly leases. Okay. Minimum, yeah. I mean, Thank they do, you. Cassette does do, uh, you know, seasonal rentals also, but everything we've been doing with the Marshall Reddick have been year leases. And we have, we've got tenants that have been in place, you know, some for three years, some for five years. We've got tenants that have been in the same places for seven years. But they, when they set up the leases, they're a minimum of a year. Okay. And we also actually have two more questions now. Um, Naomi, she wanted to hear a little bit more about the school system. Um, you did touch on new schools that are being built in the area, and she just wanted to learn a little bit more about the existing school system and your thoughts on it. Well, they've got, they've got um, the availability down here in Lee County. They have charter schools. Um, they have private schools. So there's three different types of school systems um, to come into. A lot of the private system, pri private schools, um, they're, you know, Christian, uh, Christian private schools, Catholic private schools, um, and then you've got obviously your public system. But in Florida, probably eight years ago, they incorporated charter schools, which are um, driven and paid for by the taxpayer, but they are a different uh, type of setup as far as the curriculum. They're, they kind of, 
I guess, go to their own, um, beat to their own drum. You know, they, they have a different curriculum. So there is a choice down here. You know, um, in Lee County, you have school choice. So you, you have the option to, to do one of the three. You know, if you want to do your, your child in private school, then go to private school. Um, as far as the rating systems, they're A, B, and C. Um, all schools are rated. Most of the, I would say, I would say 75 to 80 percent of the schools in, uh, in our area are B. Uh, a rated some of the a rated schools um, they have you know different types of um, uh, populations like some of the private schools they have smaller class sizes so um, but the school systems are really good um, Lee County is uh, I don't know where they rank in the state um, I could probably find that out but um, you know we've we've had our daughter and our three grown boys go through the school systems down here and uh, you know we're happy with them so okay uh, that's pretty much uh, all I can tell you about on the schools Okay, and one more final question, um, Naomi. She also wanted to know um, if a tenant doesn't pay the rent, how easy is it in terms of the eviction process? Well, we, we are we are a state that favors the the actual owner. Um, so you can typically it's not, it's unlike California. You know, if you have a tenant that doesn't pay. They down here in Florida, they can have him out in, in less than 30 days. They do a three day notice to pay. Um, if he does not pay uh, full rent up in, within three days, then they do another uh, letter and basically, you know, uh, they don't have to go before a judge. It's not a court. Uh, I mean, it is it is through the through the sheriff's department. Um, but typically, if a tenant doesn't pay, they can be literally have their stuff hauled to the side of the street in, in less than 30 days. So it is. Uh, it is our state uh, favors the um, owners. the owners, um, not the tenants. Absolutely, you're so correct. Um, California is definitely not a landlord friendly state. <laughs> it can take right. a while to get tenants out, unlike that's your. The, um, that's the word I was looking for, Michelle. Yeah. We, we they, they definitely favor the landlords down here. Understood. So. Um, Next steps, of course, like I said, I will be here for um, about another hour or so. So if you have any questions, please feel free to give me a call. My number um, is a little blacked out on the screen, but it's 949-885-5162. And of course, you can see my email. You can email me directly at msuter at marshallreddick.com. And I will be standing by, um, like I said, to take your calls. So as soon as I get an email, I will respond in the order in which I receive the email and get back to everyone as soon as possible. I want to thank Ken and Terry again for the great presentation on the Florida market. I am looking forward to um, definitely sending some investors your way to see what properties you're interested in. All right. Well, we thank you for your guys' time, everyone thank out you. there listening to the webinar. Thanks again. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, just give us a call. Great. There thank you, you so much. And thank everyone for attending. Have a great evening. All right. Thanks. Bye, guys. Bye.